Hello, my brother. Hope you are doing well as always. And I'm back with my Bradcaster. It's been a while, and um, I think I should share some updates of what's been happening and some changes what have happened so far and future ones as well. So um, come with me on a journey. <laughs> since I started this parts caster build. And if you're new to me, this is your first video, go and check out the others. I've got a playlist together. I'll, there'll be something popping up or, or um, there'll be a link below. So do check that out. And you can get the full backstory of what's going on, all right? But yeah, it's been knocking on nearly a year ago. I think I posted the video in June last year, early June. So yeah, scarily nearly a year. and. I've been loving it. I've uh, I've used it. Obviously, I can't gig properly, um, so it hasn't done any gigs, but it's done a few little jams here and there since things have opened up. And I've used it on quite a few sessions, and I've taken it into a couple of studios as well, just to kind of play it in. And it sounds great. It looks great. I've had lovely feedback from you guys who watch on the tube and people I've done recordings for and stuff. It sounds really cool. But there was one thing what was irking me a little bit uh which in the end i just thought it's got to be looked at and that was the neck and i think i i haven't i don't shockingly i don't watch back my old videos <laughs> but i think i would have said uh about the neck it was it was a nice chunk here for me but i was finding it just too wide here um best way of me uh describing it for myself anyway is kind of like if you had like a les paul with the nice thickness there but then having kind of it be wide almost like ibanez you know what i mean it was that kind of cross pollination uh that's probably a wrong word to use there but for me i was just it was getting to the point i was just thinking about it all the time uh and also the high e string was uh slipping off uh the guitar neck quite a bit and I was noticing, I remember um, towards the end of last year, I can't remember now, it all blurs together, but I, went, I had some session work uptown and I was doing some kind of high chordal stuff and I was noticing um, that high E string was, was slipping off a lot. I'd be very conscious of it because I just took this guitar because I wanted to play it in and it's, it's uh, you know, with the humbucker and the single coils, it's, you can get a lot of sound out of it, but it was just falling off and... I was like, nah, this is this has got to be looked at. In fact, I think it was early this year. It was. This is all a bit of a blur. But anyway, so I thought, right, I've got to look at this neck. I've got to get it kind of sanded. So I was chatting with Darren from Daniel's Guitars, who has helped me along the way on this journey. 
and I said, mate, I'm really sorry, but can you can we do something on this neck? <laughs> it's, it's just too it's just too wide here. I just want those shoulders taking in a lot more, you know. So there's a lot of talk back and forth, and um, we were going to do a mould of my Telecaster neck. But I was saying to him, I don't want it exactly like this because I think it's important for a guitar to have its own unique feel and character. So after talking the game back and forth, we decided not to do that. And I said, look, let me be at the workshop with you while you sand the neck and then I can kind of feel it each stages. And as you're seeing right now, uh, you'll be, no, this is Darren sanding away at the guitar neck, right? And filing it down and just getting it so that it, when I put it in my hand, I was like, yeah, that's it, you know? So he didn't take loads off because it didn't need loads off. It just needed, you know, it was, you know, it's a difference between that and that, you know what I mean? It's just a, a slight personal thing where I want it just to pick up and I'm like, yeah, and I'm not thinking about, oh, that's too wide or that's not wide enough or anything like that. So after a nice bit of filing and sanding, I remember picking it up, I was like, oh, that feels good. And he's like, well, let me sand it off and put some strings on it and let's see how you feel. And I was like, I think, I think we have the winner. And I was really tempted, well, I'm not tempted. I said to him, I was like, oh, I like the idea of not having any finish on the back. And <laughs> the mad scientist that Darren is, he's like, no, I'm not having that. It looks tacky. So, <laughs> but I said to him, please put a very, very thin finish. So this is actually a lot thinner than what it was. It was relatively thin before, but now it's a lot, lot thin. Uh, thin, a lot, lot thin, a lot, lot thinner, I should say. And it feels great. It feels really, really nice. And like I say, it's just these shoulders have been taken in ever so slightly. And now... <laughs> lovely it's still it's not a, a thin neck by any means I know Darren if you're watching you'll disagree with me there but I don't class this as a thin neck it's still got a nice kind of chunk I don't know let's see if camera two uh, can pick that up there you know it, it's still you know a nice bit of girth going on there but it's now the width which is or well, the shoulders have been taken down quite a bit uh, what makes it much more comfortable to play. So we're nearly there. There's still one thing what needs to be changed on it and I'm gonna do another video talking about that because uh, where I said about before, the high E string um, would fall off a little bit. It this, uh, the, by taking the neck down a little bit has really sorted that out by about 50%, but it's still coming off a little bit. Um, nowhere near as much as before like when I used to do kind of woodly diddly stuff <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving fuzz at the moment. Uh, when I do all the woodly diddly stuff it would uh, it would fall off and now it's not but it is still falling off a little bit. So I have bit the bullet and got a Callaham bridge um, or trem block, if you will. I've got the whammy by over there and it's come with the springs as well. And uh, this is the narrow spacing. And I borrowed a friend of mine and Darren's, you know, a lovely guy called Stuart, actually who uh, built the ghetto amp. You would have seen a couple of videos back if you're a regular viewer. And um, he had the narrow uh, bridge saddle spacings of the Callaham. And I borrowed that for a bit and put it in here. And I had it in here for a couple of weeks and it really sorted it out regarding uh, the neck, uh, the string falling off. And this is before I did the filing on the neck. Well, I say I, before I got Darren to do the filing on the neck. So I was like, well, these are really expensive, <laughs> but it worked. And if it's better now with the neck, if I get the Callaham, it's really gonna sort it out. So I bit the bullet. Paid the money <laughs> for a Callahan bridge. If you know about these, these aren't no, these aren't cheap. Um, so I'm going to be in another video. I'll be putting that in, taking this one out. This one in here at the moment is a Goto uh, trem block bridge 
all that kind of stuff. So um, I'll, I'll take that out. I'll put this in. And uh, before I take it out, I'll do a little bit of an AB comparison. Let's see if there's a tonal difference as well. That'd be interesting to hear. Um, so I'll do that. And yeah, maybe then, what would that be? So this is like the fourth video. So yeah, the, it'll be the final, hopefully it's the final chapter and this guitar is complete. And the thing is, you know, what is interesting here when, you no, know, obviously building guitars is that, you know, when you go in a guitar shop and say you want to get a new Strat or, you know, put any name brand guitar you want to get, you play a load out and then out of say 10 strats, you'll find one you like, or even out of 10 strats, you don't like, oh, I like that, I like that. And the 11th one, you're like, oh, I like that. So when you are kind of building a guitar, it's, <laughs> it's little tweaks you've got to do along the ways, I think. I think you've got to be very, very lucky to get it bang on straight away. I mean, if you two guys come to mind, Brian May, I think he, him and his dad, it took him about four years to build the Red Special. And I imagine he was defining it over and over, you know, getting every single thing right until he was 100% happy with it. And then he ruled the world with the Red Special. And with Eddie Van Halen, you know, he had, it was the black and white one, but there's, uh, there's some great videos on YouTube actually talking about his Frankenstein Strat. Um, but you know, he had different necks. He had a rosewood on there for a bit, then obviously settled on the maple. Um, and then it was black and white, and then he, you know, changed the colour of it, he eventually put a Floyd on it, he sometimes took the maple neck off and put a rosewood neck on, again, as I try and find it, it's a great shot of him and Brian May again, actually, and he's got the Frankie guitar, but it's a rosewood neck with some weird headstock going on, it's not like a, head, a Fender type headstock. So he was always tweaking as well, then he'll go back and I think, the maple neck in the end it wasn't the original one i'm not sure I, i'm pretty sure it was not the original maple neck is a different one or maple fingerboard anyway my point being we're tweakers guitar players are tweakers so you know i love this it sounds so cool but the neck just wasn't a hundred percent to my liking you know what i mean so now it's it's so much better you know it's still a really good handful but it's so much better and the tone's still there. I didn't want to get a new neck because it sounds good. <laughs> you know, I often hear that a lot. Like, I remember hearing like John Mayer said about his 62 Strat, the 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 sunburst with the, with the actually similar guard to this, you know, with the wear up there. And he said, it's quite a hard guitar to play, I remember reading, but it sounds good, you know? So you need to do a little bit of fight. But this was a hard guitar for me to play, but I was like, I can make it a little bit more playable. But I didn't want to get rid of the neck because the rosewood on it is beautiful and it sounds really, really cool. So hopefully, let me do a few more sounds. I haven't really done much playing. So, um, could this, oh, I will say this is really starting to check now. This is checking. It's got some dings. Uh, I've, <laughs> I put another ding up there recently. It's got some scratches on the back. I don't know if it's picking up the checking. I can't really tell, but trust me, it's really starting to check on here. Um, but uh, here's some sounds. Uh, this is the Vertex Ultraphonics. <laughs>
that's the Brad Castle. You know what? The high E string didn't fall off once there. Um, but uh, I'm loving it. It's a great guitar. It's fastly becoming my number one strat. And um, I can't wait to play this live so that um, because, well, A, just to play it live in general. And also, this is going to wear so great. <laughs> it really, really is, you know, the proper way. You know, nothing against people who like buying relic guitars, but I like the look of old guitars, but done the old fashioned way of playing them. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm pretty sure people like geeking out on stuff like this as much as I do. And um, yeah, the neck's so much better. And once I put this uh, Callaham on, hopefully it's gonna be even better. So look out for that video over the next week or two. Thank you for your love and support. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and um, yeah, please like the video as well because it all helps. It really, really does. Anyway, I've been Mike Bradley. You've been you. Lots of love. See you soon. Mike Bradley signing out. Bye. Fade it away. Fade it away.